Okay. Had to go round up our pastoral staff without there being all social and get them in here. Thank you for making the time to be here. You know, it's a beautiful Sunday. We haven't had a lot of those lately, and it's nice to be have the good sunshine, but thanks for making the time to come to this church family meeting. Um, the first thing I want to do is uh, take a minute and look back. I don't know what your life is like, the pace of your life, but uh, life moves pretty fast around here. There's so much is happening so quickly, and it's easy to, to constantly be thinking about the next thing. At least that's how I feel. And it's good to pause and look back. As a matter of fact, uh, at the end of our series on the sermon of uh, the story of God, uh, we're going to finish by looking at Deuteronomy chapter 8. And Pastor Sterling will be preaching then. And that, that whole chapter um, is God telling his people to remember, lest they forget. It's a beautiful chapter. He's saying, we're about to enter the promised land. You're about to enter into an unprecedented season of prosperity in your young nation's history. And the most important thing is that you remember who I am. The worst thing that could happen to you would be you would forget who I am and what I've done. So let's remember. So I thought it would be good for us to take a little stroll down memory lane together as a church family. The first slide here is a kind of a timeline. This, is, this timeline is um, probably too far away for most of you to see it. But suffice it to say, there's a lot on it. It uh, is looking back, uh, as you look back over our last, since, since, since September, since the August meeting, we've merged with the Faith Baptist fam Church family of Mill Creek. We're now part of our church family, and some of them are here. As a matter of fact, if you are part of uh, the Faith Baptist folks who have now become part of Chapel Street Church, would you raise your hand so we can see you? Thank you. That seems like three, four years ago to me, how fast things moved, but it, it is, and that was, that's very recent, and God did that, and I remember thinking back to the first time that we were ever approached by Faith Baptist, would we consider this sort of thing, and we were thinking, no, I don't think so, and God had other plans that none of us even dreamed. We were, standing here today, thinking about all that's happened, it's remarkable to see all that God has done, because none of us saw that coming or could have predicted it. We've transitioned uh, from Brian, Pastor Brian Coffey, as, as our senior pastor, to, uh, to me, which is still, uh, I, I still feel like I'm getting used to that. I've worked on his team under his leadership for 17 years and now to be in the senior pastor's seat. These two things alone, a church merger and a senior level transition in leadership, those two things by themselves, churches can go sideways. And God has not only protected and preserved us, but used those things to bless us and grow us in ways. But I think it's worth us just pausing and, and thanking God for that. It's remarkable that that's happened. Where is Brian? Is Brian here? There he is. Over there. Right. We're in his Chapel Street gear. Um, and then... Um, you know, we, uh, these are not small things, but we had a vision, back in January, a vision weekend for the first time, simulcast to all of our, we, we, well, not simulcast, we taped and played at all of our services, the same message at the same time about our vision as a church and where we're headed. The neighborhood initiative, our neighborhood impact campaign. Uh, think about that. We have merged with the church, had senior pastor transition, running a capital funds campaign and preparing to launch a third campus all at the same time. I think they say that when you're a, in a new in your leadership role, there's a honeymoon period. I guess perhaps I'm putting that to the test to see if that's really true. But I don't feel like it's me. We have such a wonderful team doing so many things that are happening at such a rapid rate around here. Um, and then on top of that, we're, the construction has begun, and we, we changed our church name. All of that in the space of what, what's, how many months since August? I count real fast. Seven, eight months? It's amazing. It's astounding. And we praise God for it. Uh, and I, I don't mean to say that, that we should pat ourselves on the back, look at all that we've done, but I, we really should stop and praise God. And so that's what I like to do. 
right where you're sitting, right together here. I'd like to just for us to take a minute, cluster up with people that are near you, and just have five minutes of prayer thanking God for all that he has done in the life of our church since we met last as a church family meeting, which was back in, in August. So I'm going to come down and join you, cluster up, the people you know or don't know, and let's pray and thank God. Father, we thank you for the way you have uh, really blessed us and poured out your grace on us in so many ways as a church family. And you've stood in the gap at times when we have not seen things clearly and you've uh, moved us forward when we've been uh, reticent to follow and you've slowed us down at times as well. And, and we, as we look back, we see not only things that, that have been accomplished, but we see a record of your faithfulness. And we celebrate that. And we praise you for it. And it helps us, God, uh, you know, grow our faith and strengthen us as we look forward to where you're taking us. And we are excited. We want to follow where you lead. Well, we want your heart and desire for this church. We know it belongs to you. Thank you. And, and we pray your blessing over the rest of this meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, I would just, um, on, an, on, on one more note about remembering, um, we used to do this as a family with a little victory candle to keep a record. But, you know, it's, we've been doing this as a church staff. And our staff, and, and Friday and Saturday, we were away as executive council and senior leadership team and did a similar exercise in reflecting and looking back over God's faithfulness. And I would encourage you as individuals over your own life and your family's life to do the same thing. To sit down with paper and pen and think back over God's faithfulness in the last year and, and keep a record of it. 
so that you would not forget who it is that's blessed you and who it is that's brought you this far and do that with your, your children and grandchildren as well. It's a good thing to do. Now, as we talk about what's happening presently and look forward, a little uh, financial update on the Neighborhood Impact Campaign. Uh, by the way, Doug Kite, who usually is much better uh, with the numbers than I am, was unable to be here. He's, uh, I think, he's, on a, he's with his uh, D group guys who he's led, if I, think, if I understand correctly where he is. But, and uh, he's unable to be here, as is our church chairman, Dave Prost, had previous commitments as well, but other EC members are here. So we have, currently, this number is, was, was current as of the middle of this past week. It's about 375 now, 370 pledges. Those are the pledge cards turned in on Commitment Sunday, totaling 4.31 million. We have non-pledge contributions of 112,000. Uh, total gifts, that total cash in so far on the 4.3 of 1.6 million, and that's really good. That's, that's over a quarter of it, almost a quarter of it there already in. That's really, we're very grateful for that. 476 total participants uh, engaged in, that means people who have either pledged uh, in writing or verbally or have made a financial contribution already. And that number continues to grow. There are a number of people that have indicated uh, they're still working on their, their generosity plans, and we're excited and, and, and expect that to grow. By way of reference, under Growing to Serve, we had um, over a million dollars of money come in after the second, first year of the campaign. So after the Commitment Sunday and the first year went by, we had another million dollars come in toward that campaign. So we feel real strong about this and where we are. I want to give you an update where things stand. Uh, and as, you, as you know, our, our goal for the project was a little over $6 million for all things West, ooh, Kesslinger, South Street, and Mill Creek. If you don't know, we're trying to refer to our campuses now by their street that they're on rather than by East and West, because East and West of what exactly? If someday God was to have us plant a campus on the far east side of Geneva, what would this be? The Middle East? What would we call this campus then? So we're just going to use and, and we're going to have like a, a jar in the office for quarters every time we say it wrong, which would be a lot of money by then. Anyway, so that's where things stand there. But I'll walk through each of these slides uh, and then bring a couple people up to make a comment or two. And at the end, we'll have a chance for you to ask questions or make comments if you have them. Uh, on our facility side of the Neighborhood Impact Campaign, uh, we, we have the Mill Creek Campus. The new sanctuary is in progress. If you've driven by there, if you haven't, I encourage you to go by there. It's pretty exciting. Uh, roof is up, on, it's under roof and under wall, uh, progressing. And with the new sign, people are, we're hearing even comments in the community. Um, in fact, who was it? Was it Andrew? No, who was telling me that they were, that where they were? It was, it was, it was Jesse. You were telling us about Jesse, where he works at school, that some of the teachers and students were asking him, what's going on? What's that church over there that's happening? And there, there's an excitement and energy and a buzz brewing. Uh, the children's wing is ahead of schedule. Uh, the, the, the new addition, which is the, the, worship, the part of the lobby and the, and the sanctuary worship center, that's a little behind schedule, partly because of the crazy rain we had and also partly because of the materials delay earlier on in the process. We believe and hope that, that we'll, we'll be able to make up that ground, when I say we, they, will be able to make up that ground in construction now that it's under roof and we'll be able to still keep to our launch date of September 24th. However, as most of you know, with construction projects, some of that is unpredictable, so we're holding that loosely, but our intent is to stick to the timeline and schedule we have for a grand opening on September 24th. Did I say that right, Sterling? Yes. Good. Great. Thank you. Uh, that's our fall grand opening. That's the date we have there, but we just put fall, and it says opening in the fall on the sign because we want to recognize that things that are outside of our con control with construction might delay that. Uh, next, you'll see some images on the screen of some of the progress. You see Sterling in his new pulpit. The, the, the upper left-hand corner uh, is, the, is the lift there uh, under roof, and the, the far right-hand corner is the children's wing, and then the aerial view from a drone, uh, which we, Chris Burns, who attends our church, has a drone, which makes me excited and kind of nervous. But that's where we get the fun aerial shots of our campuses, and he took that for us there as, as, as well. So you'll see that happening, and it's fun. I think that, to me, whenever time I, Sterling says often that he drives by there for no reason just because it's exciting to think about, and to pray. I, I see that as like a physical representation of what God is doing, building and expanding and multiplying our impact, and we're excited about that. Um, let me pause there before we go to the Kesslinger stuff and, and, and bring up Sterling, then just to ask him to give you just a brief update on how things are going, not on the facility side so much, but on the development of the team, staff, and core launch team, and where, where things stand there. I probably should turn that on, huh? Check. Well, good afternoon. Um, since we last spoke at a, a church family meeting uh, several months ago now, um, one of the responsibilities that I was given was to recruit, if you will, and, and start to prepare a launch team. 
meaning church uh, families from the Chapel Street Church community they are presently attending to help get them ready for um, uh, launching the new campus in the fall. Our goal at that time was to recruit 150 adults. Um, we are well on our way. We're at about 135, 137 uh, right around there. So we're very nearly there uh, with, with the adults that we feel like we wanted to recruit in order to start this launch team. As a matter of fact, almost every week I have a conversation with somebody. Most of this recruitment has happened organically. It's been me starting to have conversations with people and then those people having conversations with people and saying, hey, we'd love to be a part of this or we live in that neighborhood and we'd like to be excited. Some people have even come to me and said, hey, how do I, how do I get a part of this? Or, or if I haven't been asked, is it, is it okay? Like, am I, I'm like, absolutely. Nobody is, we're not attempting at all to leave anybody out of this. We're growing the team uh, through kind of conversation and through personal relationship. And so if you're sitting here this morning and you're like, hey, I'm planning to attend the Mill Creek campus, please email me and, and let me know. I would love to loop you in on the communication and what's taking place. So we're really excited. Just a few weeks ago, this uh, launch team gathered in this very space um, just to meet together and pray, um, just to continue to seek God's face in terms of the ministry that he wants to unfold on that campus and to, to establish from the very outset that we want to be a community that's praying together, praying for each other, and praying for what God has set in front of us. Um, and so we have seen God's faithfulness already. We have a great group of students and children that are also a part of this team. Um, and it's really, really exciting to see families, entire families, getting behind this. Our next step, actually beginning this week, is we are going um, to capitalize on the fact that the Mill Creek community is having its annual garage sale. And we are going to go out into the community and deliver little care packages um, very briefly, very shortly, we know they're going to be busy, but just to say we're moving into the neighborhood and we want to tell you that um, we want to get to know you and we look forward to the opportunity to, to partnering together, to inviting them to be a part of what God is doing. Um, so if you think about it, be praying for us on Thursday afternoon. We're going to go about between one and three out into the Mill Creek neighborhood to deliver these little post-garage sale care packages to say, um, hey, this is who we are, and, and we'd, love to, uh, we'd love to get to know you. Um, beginning in July, then we will start to meet together as a launch team, that, that 150 adults plus our, our kids and our children, just down the hall in the student center in what we call the incubation period, which is, is just preparing us. Um, ultimately leading us to our launch. And hopefully in early September, we will have a soft launch out at the campus, leading us to that launch, uh, official launch to the community and the campus on September 24th. So we are moving, and the timeline has been going according to what we've planned so far. Um, and, and we want to continue to extend the invitation. So if you're here and you're like, I'm not, I'm planning on going there, I'm not receiving emails or hearing from you, please email me this week. Let me know of your interest, and I would be uh, happy to include you on the communication. We don't, we're certainly not attempting to leave anybody out, and we're excited about all that God's got in store for us. So, um, And we need plenty of volunteers to serve in our children's ministries and worship ministries and et cetera. Thanks, Sterling. Sterling said something I want to pick up on and go further with, and that's um, as it relates to the idea of uh, which campus you would attend. As you mentioned, he's recruited a team. People are still coming up and saying, we want to be part of that. Um, obviously, when it comes to a new campus and new ministry there, they'll be placed in places of service. They'll be, they'll, they're going to be relied upon heavily to serve and to make all the different ministries go, and that's really important and, and understandable. I think it's the perfect time for us as a church family, as we get into the summer, to do that for all of our campuses and for all of us, to say all of us are needed, all of us are required. And I would like to ask everybody who attends to consider what's your campus going to be? 
Where are you going to roll up your sleeves and plug in and say, this is my place of worship, this is my community, I'm going to serve here and make this, and make this vital and vibrant and thriving uh, place of worship. The temptation has been to sort of travel around and pick and choose. And we, of course, would not restrict anybody. Anybody can go anywhere they want to worship. Uh, however, I think it would be healthy for us to think in those terms and, and good for us as well. And on the, toward that end, what we don't want is for another 150 curiosity seekers that are from our church family to go there on week one and fill the whole place so that nobody who's a visitor could come. The idea is that we would have a core group of people who want to worship there inviting their friends and neighbors to come and experience God's grace there. So I would encourage, and I will do this more publicly later, if you're not going to be worshiping regularly and serving at Mill Creek, then, then probably tell us where you are going to be and don't go there just because you think it's just because you're curious, at least on the first week. Does that make sense? Uh, anyway, it'll be a relaunch for all of us in terms of where we're going to serve and where we're going to worship and where we're going to see God's grace manifest itself in that community. All right, let's move uh, now to uh, keeping with the neighborhood up impact update on, on the facilities at our Kesslinger campus. I almost said West. I did just say West, but I meant Kesslinger. Um, there, as you know, the worship center is underway. We're worshiping with some inconvenience. And I, I love Cheryl Facilio. Uh, I, think it was, I think it was Palm Sunday. Or, no, it was last week. I can't remember now. And uh, when there was the rain, was it last week the crazy rain? Was it two weekends ago? Last weekend. And we had the buckets out there in the middle of, the, of wherever it's sitting and the garbage cans and, and pipes and thing, construction stuff tucked away. And we were kind of apologizing for our mess a little bit, you know, the inconvenience. And Cheryl said, you know what, it's okay. Uh, we're, we're, our room's a little bit of a mess and so are most of us, if we're honest about it with our lives. But God's grace is still good enough for our mess and I love that. Not that we want to keep the room that way forever. Um, but anyway. I would say it this way. It's okay to not be okay around here. God just doesn't want us to stay there. And on that note, things are progressing in the worship center. Uh, and, of course, on the roof, uh, part of the reason we had so much rain inside is because we had that crazy weekend of rain right when they had the roof was only under that plastic, and that was it. And so that's, the roof is, is progressing as well. And we're excited. That's not something you're going to see, but it's something that's going to save us a lot of money and be a huge uh, um, help to that facility because we had that goofy design where it was just a bathtub up there collecting water and leaking badly, not only into the room, but also in the roof itself. And so that's being repaired. And you see it's uh, walled off with the plastic. The nursery is all being uh, the nursery and children's core is being gutted and redesigned and reconfigured as well. So that work is, is in progress and underway. We're on track for, to have all of that work completed uh, in early August. We're hosting the Global Leadership Summit uh, the second weekend of August, and we hope it's all done, certainly the Worship Center, in time uh, for that event. And so certainly in time for us when we come back with our fall schedule uh, when school begins. And so you'll see some images here of uh, that work as well. These, the, the nurseries behind the plastic in the upper left-hand corner, that's the new uh, toddler play area with lots of concrete and rebar. Kids will love that. Um, <laughs> see the gym there, and, the, and then, of course, the upper right, uh, the, the roof, which is being redone. And, it's, uh, and that, that, I love that crane lifting up. That's one of our HVAC units, I believe, being lifted off right there. So you'll see the, the pro, pro, And these, by the way, all this information and pictures are available in our update on our neighborhood impact on our website as well. You can see all of that. Okay, then going to South Street campus. This is the smaller of the three parts of the project in terms of its financial uh, scope, but it's certainly not small in our minds because it relates to Shepherd's Heart, which is a really important and rapidly growing ministry around here. We recognize as leadership that the long-term eventual destination of Shepherd's Heart is probably not at this campus. We don't yet know exactly where that will be and what that will look like. But we do also know that between now and whenever that, wherever that is, we need to do something to keep that ministry growing. And we're, so that's why we're addressing the storage space, which is really badly needed. Uh, down the hall, uh, at, where the hand-in-hand -hand preschool rooms, when they vacate, we're going to put in, do two different things. Bring in some refrigeration units, if I have this right, Bruce, right, for cold storage, which we've not had the capacity for. And we're also going, and we are not exactly sure we're having estimates and designs even, as we, even this, this coming week, for, for delivery. Uh, right now, we have to bring everything in by hand on, off of giant trucks. There's a, a plan being worked out for a, uh, a pad, a con pouring a concrete pad and a conveyor belt system to come off of the, I guess it'd be the back, is that gray? Or get, what street is that behind the, uh, uh, this campus, right back? Gary. Gary. Right, uh, right back there. There will be a conveyor belt system for the delivery from the trucks. Anyway, this may be more information than you want, but that's what we're trying to do, address the delivery and the storage uh, and refrigeration of Shepherd's Heart in the interim because we really believe eventually we're going to need to build a bigger facility or find a better, bigger location that can house all of its needs, not only food pantry, clothing closet, 
our counseling and meeting rooms, our budgeting team rooms, the staff that's growing and volunteers as well. Uh, it's, 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 it's thrilling to see God using that, but we recognize that's probably going to, there'll be another stage to that. This is an interim step on, on Shepherd's Heart. Did I miss anything there, Bruce, on that? Okay. That is the, the, the update on the Neighborhood Impact Campaign so far. Um, so I'm going to pause now and, uh, and, and, and open it up for questions. And we have members of the EC and Pastor Brian and Bruce and Sterling as well. Uh, you can ask questions about anything I've talked about. I'm sure there will be some. Or any things that, ha- things that haven't been addressed as well. Um, is Stetson Butler here? No? He might be somewhere else. <laughs> he is somewhere else for sure. Right? <laughs> If he were here, I would say it publicly to bless him, but I'll say it just in case you, uh, in his absence. Stetson and his team, Paige Peltier is here back there, uh, is our director of social media and works in our communications department. They have done such amazing work behind the scenes in preparation for the name change uh, rollout and launch. As you know, that happened pretty fast, but it really wasn't uh, seat of the pants. They had worked hard and prepared and were thoughtful, and I just wanted to say publicly thank you to Stetson and Paige and all the communications team. John Harper, is he here? He's probably fixing something somewhere. Uh, John as well, have done, they've done just a tremendous job getting us ready for all of that. So I wanted to say publicly thank you to all of you. All right, uh, questions that you have. And, and you can say them and I'll repeat them for the sake of the recording. Anybody have anything they'd like to comment on or make a question or ask a question about? Feel free. Tom. I'd like to, I'd like to uh, uh, hear the response uh, of the outside world to the name change and uh, the elimination of the term Baptist from our name. Okay, world? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure I can speak for the outside world since I'm probably one of the most inside people here. Um, but I, I can tell you anecdotally, the response we've had this week from people inside and outside of our church has been overwhelmingly positive by posts on social media, comments on Facebook and social media, by emails we've received, not just me, but members of our staff, by conversations we've had with people. Uh, it, it, and it's been really, really, really encouraging. If you saw the article in the King County Chronicle about the name change, uh, the one, we released a, uh, just a statement to the press about the name change. And she called right away, asked questions, very positive and excited. Um, and, and so the, my sense is it's been really positive. One anecdotal story is that Jackie uh, Reagans, who's our receptionist downstairs, uh, I don't think she's here today, but she's the UPS guy. She gets to know all the delivery people and the drivers. And so she, he, he said, hey, you changed your name because he's always coming to, you know, the same address. And he asked why, and she talked about the reasons why, that we want to be more welcoming and inviting to people. That, and she says, by the way, what did you think about Baptist? He goes, well, I'd never go to a Baptist church, but I might come here. I like you people. So, <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I don't think he's ever been to a service. He just comes in and sees Jackie. You know, and I listen to, my office is right, I, I, she's right outside of my office, so I listen to her answer the phone all day. Good morning, Chapel Street Church. This is Jackie, how can I help you? She's caught herself a couple of times. And then, and then I, I can hear what people are, I can assume what people are saying on the other end, right? They're going, oh, uh, I thought I was calling, uh, and she's like, oh, we changed our name, you know? So anyway, my sense is that it's been a very positive reaction. Uh, some people have expressed questions about why did you do that? What, what's the purpose behind it? And what's the meaning of this name? Um, and that sort of thing. But, but, but by and large, it's been overwhelmingly positive. So comments on that note? Others of you? I think we'll find out the reaction of the outside world uh, as we go. That's the reason we did it. Other, other questions? You don't have to use the mic as well. Other snide remarks? Sarcastic <laughs> comments? Anything? Not, <laughs> Harry? Okay. At Mill Creek? At the new campus. His question is, what will be the dominant flavor of the worship uh, at the new Mill Creek campus? It will be um, similar in tone to our West Campus contemporary worship. Not exactly the same. They're not, it's not a carbon copy. But it would not be uh, like it is here at the first 915 hour. Not pipe organ and hymn. It will be, be contemporary in nature. Yeah. And as you know, the staff going to lead worship out there are, are Ali uh, uh, Goebel and uh, Eric Elfman. And they're going to be the two-headed team to lead out there. If you know Allie's heart, she likes to uh, take sacred and traditional hymns and, and put a contemporary spin on them. So I think there'll be a lot of that. But it'll be very similar in style to what we do at our West Campus. Other questions? 
Hi, Mary. So your question is, how will middle school and high school work uh, in the, when, we, when, we, when we launch the third campus? Yeah. I'm going to give this to Sterling Moore. It's on. So yeah, I think, Mary, as you know, um, and we've communicated out to parents, um, in June, we are going, we've been talking about and planning for what we've called student integration, which is our seventh through our high school students joining our um, adult worship services on Sunday morning. So on Sunday morning specifically, beginning in seventh grade, our kids, we're not going to offer age-specific programming. That actually has less to do with a third campus. That has far more to do with research that shows, that talks about the longevity of a student's faith and owning their faith and participation with all of us in adult worship services, meaning that they feel a part of this collective body. And the way that they experience that and, and realize that is when they worship alongside all of us and serve alongside of all of us. Um, so most of our, our high school and middle school ministries, so we will have at all three campuses birth through sixth grade. That'll be the same. You could go to any campus. That'll be the same everywhere. Our seventh and eighth grade students and our high school students will worship and serve alongside of us on Sunday morning and then have their regular programming either Wednesday night, Sunday night, of course their events, retreats, all of those sorts of things will be collective, meaning that all three of our campuses will go to the West, the Kesslinger campus <laughs> on Wednesday night and have Club 56 there, no matter which of the three campuses they attend. All of our high school kids will go to uh, the student center on Sunday night for what we call our D group gathering, which is when all of our D groups gather together once a month and do worship and teaching and community stuff, all their events. All our seventh and eighth grade students will gather on Sunday night at the Kesslinger campus for our uh, DTP program and discipleship training and that sort of thing. So Sunday morning, it'll be the same at all three campuses. And then during the week, all three campuses will send their kids to those different collective ministry things. Thanks. Well, this gets to the, the idea that we don't have to reproduce all these ministries. We can represent them because we're close enough in proximity that we can still stay kind of one collective ministry in this area. Uh, there may come a day when that's not possible. If, if, if God should, should so move that we are launching a campus that's outside the, the geographical range, we would have to rethink that. But for now, we're excited about that plan. Other questions? Glenn. Yes. Wouldn't you like that, Glenn? <laughs> Glenn is saying, does that mean they could come and help me, please? <laughs> yes, in fact, uh, was it three weeks ago or two weeks ago? And, uh, on Sunday morning and down the hall in Shrek, we, they were, the whole morning was dedicated to that. We, we want our students to be worshiping and serving alongside of our adults of every age. We think that's healthy and good for the church and for them for long term. Not hive them off in a separate program. So we're encouraging, uh, we had each department head or area leader come and make a, a presentation and a pitch to serve in worship and in tech and in children's and so on. Uh, it doesn't have to be serving Sunday morning, but there'll be lots of opportunities and we anticipate a lot of that happening. So yes, good question. Others? Oh, you want the mic or do you just want to shout it out? Far away. Yeah, anyway, I just have a couple of things I just wanted to say regarding, um, well, first of all, um, regarding the, uh, the food pantry, Shepherd's Heart, yeah. Um, you know, I did notice that uh, there are a couple of places just right around, you know, this campus um, that are currently not being used in the sense that, um, like, they're, they're, they're adjacent properties. Yeah. Sure. Which used to be a yeah. printing service company right. that since uh, that since not had yeah. access to their uh, their facilities for quite right. some time, and they've got like a shipping and receiving mm -hmm. you know, dock for various trucks to uh, you know ship in and out right. stuff. So I thought that'd be a good idea. For That's a great idea. And you're thinking along the lines we're thinking too, like Avenue Chevrolet in Batavia is a vacant building. We're think I think financially we're not ready to do that, okay. and structurally we're not ready to do that. But those are ways we're thinking for the future. Yeah. Like, would, it, would, it be, would it be too out of our range to... At this stage, yes, but God might do that, yeah. All right, and then uh, the other thing I was about to mention was um, actually uh, just a little bit earlier today I had um, I delivered 
some donut holes because we were all out. And, uh, That's a shame when you're out of donut holes at church. <laughs> Mm. Um, the conversation that took place between me and the lady that was working behind the counter at Dunkin' Donuts literally went along the lines of, you know, oh, the church is also out of, um, you know, the local church down the street here is, it just ran out of donut holes. And she's like, oh, which one? And I, I immediately responded, oh, the one that just changed their name to Chapel Street Church. Huh. And she immediately lit up and gave me an extra 20 donut holes. <laughs> <laughs> is there a- <laughs> <laughs> Is there a better endorsement than donut holes? <laughs> Thank you for that. Thanks for that story. <laughs> I don't know if that means we could all go there and say, I, I go to this church. And <laughs> give me some donut holes. All right. Other questions? I know it's a large group and you may not feel comfortable asking out loud, but I really I hope that you, if you have them, you'll ask them. And if you don't want to ask them here, that you'll follow up with us because we, I think a good We've always been, I, I have felt that, we've, that our church has had a history of being pretty transparent and forthcoming and open about what we're doing. And we want to continue that. Uh, just talk openly about what God has done and what he is doing and where we're headed. So if you have those questions, they may be questions that we haven't thought about and need to hear. Jeff, what about um, scheduling uh, the summer and maybe the fall? For worship services? For worship services. Yeah. yeah. A great question. His question is, what about, what about fall, summer and fall worship scheduling with the three campuses? So in the summer, we won't have Mill Creek open, but we are going to do what we've done in the past, which is go down to one hour in this room at 10 o'clock. The last two years, we have closed down Word and Table and not had it over the summer. And the primary reason we've done the, one, the, the 10 o'clock hour here is so that one preacher could go from Kesslinger to South Street and back again on a Sunday morning. And we wouldn't have to have two preachers throughout the entire summer. It really helps us. It helps me get a, a reprieve and Brian a break to do some prayer and planning for the next ministry year. That's really important for us. And that's one of the reasons we've done that. So we will this year do the same thing we've done, uh, do it at 10 o'clock here. And we will have Word and Table in the Student Center um, since, that, since we're not going to have Trek Sunday morning anymore. We'll put Word and Table in the Student Center and they'll have a video feed for the sermon at the same hour. That way we'll keep that service going. We think it's healthy if we want to grow that service to allow them to keep meeting. But that's our plan for the summer. Starting in the fall right now, and these things are all we're holding loosely because things are, the landscape is shifting. We plan to have, go back to our regular times at 9.15 and 10.45, both at South Street and Kesslinger, and to have a 10 o'clock worship hour at our Mill Creek campus. The main reason for that, to have one hour, is 10 o'clock is sort of the, statistically uh, the, the, best, the, the best hour in the day of worship, if you can have it. But when you grow, add two services, you can't get them, uh, you get them as close as you can. But the big reason for us is, we have four members of our preaching team right now. We want to grow that team, but right now we have four members. Myself, Pastor Brian, Pastor Sterling, and, and Andrew Griffiths. Who's, and sit up, Andrew. Back in the Andrew. Look at, look at Andrew. Andrew is new on our staff. Came, came out of our pastoral residency program, which is the, he's the first one, the first of many, we hope and pray. And he's uh, new on our staff, replacing Jonathan Goebel, who's fenced God's call to transition out of vocational ministry. And he's leading our, our middle school ministry now and will continue to preach. So there's four of us. And there'll be three campuses with multiple services. You can understand how there's not really any time for, it, it's pretty tight. So at the outset, having a 10 o'clock hour at Mill Creek does the same thing it does for us in the summer here. It allows one preacher, if we needed them to, to go from one campus to Mill Creek and back again on a, on a Sunday morning. So we would only need to have two preachers instead of three every week. Does that make sense? We recognize that's not ideal and that's not the long-term solution. We need to grow our capacity to do video on occasion. Not, we want to do primarily live preaching, as we've said all along. And we need to grow our preaching team. But right now, that's why we're planning to do 10 o'clock at Mill Creek. So I hope that was clear. If it wasn't, you're probably too tired to bother asking again. Other questions? Jeff Terrell. Um, oh, and you're, is this a good question? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Not to, uh, you know, put you on the spot here, get a little personal, but, I mean, you have explained this morning all these things that are going on. Yeah. Um, you've taken over as the head pastor. And Brian, I mean, you guys were a team before. Yeah. And now there's been no back. Billy's got a whole separate role. How are you doing? Um, <laughs> real, I mean, real, there's a lot going on, and you're kind yeah. of, you know, having a lot more balls up in the air than. Yeah. His question is, how am I doing? <laughs> I'm a wreck. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm um, I appreciate that question. Uh, thanks for asking it so publicly, Jeff. 
I, I, I don't mean this as a way of deflection. I really don't. It is a lot, and I do feel the weight of it. Um, but we have a tremendous staff and team here. I, people have presumed that because I'm in the senior pastor role that I'm doing it all. That's not true. We have wonderful staff here. Your own wife is carrying a huge load in our, our curriculum writing and, and developing of our groups. Sterling and Bruce and Brian and, I mean, and there's people that aren't here. That, so I'm, I feel very, we're not, it's, it's all, it is and has always been a collaborative structure around here. I don't feel alone or like I'm carrying all that. So uh, there's exhausting days, like for all of us, but mostly it's a good exhaustion. It's exciting. I feel passionate and excited about what God's doing. I, I love telling the stories about it. And so it's not uh, like, it'd be different if we're, Man, we have so much going on and none of it's going well, you know, and, and that I feel just, if you just, in the church world, when I tell people that are friends of mine who are pastors serving in different parts of the country or, or state, what we're, what we're tackling together as a church family all at once, they're dumbfounded and they presume there's infighting or problems or difficulties. And I'm, and I'm like, well, no, we have great people and it's really exciting. They just, it's almost, it's shocking to them. And I, that's not a credit to me. That's really a credit to all of you, <laughs> to our church family, and, of course, to God and his spirit among us. But thanks for asking that. So. How was your Prozac consumption? My Prozac consumption? Yeah. <laughs> <At> zero. <laughs> zero. My coffee consumption is way up. <laughs> My Prozac is down, so. Uh, okay. Other less personal questions? <laughs> Or comments, really, we welcome them. And again, if you if you would rather wait and think it through and email us or ask us later, we'd welcome that as well. I figured if I waited long enough, somebody would ask. Is there any consideration for some time in the next couple of years to have maybe an evangelistic outreach type thing? Are you specifically trying to target unchurched people? Are you referring to inside their services or like an external? Yeah, he's asking, uh, if you didn't hear, is there any consideration to have an evangelistic uh, emphasis or outreach program, whether that's in the service or a program that would be on a different night or day, right? Like, like uh, yeah. Um, we, we, actually, yes. Um, and if you mean by that like the old uh, idea of a, of a, of a, of a um, revival or a crusade for a couple of days, we haven't really thought in those terms. But what Sterling was talking about, so we want to do it on two levels. One is, relationally speaking, we always want to be evangelistic. The, the idea of bringing the care packages, it's, it's all got Chapel Street Church stuff on it. It's all a way of building relationships. Uh, we, we do want, in the fall, to be thinking about how the new people that are coming in. Laura Taro, Jeff's wife over here, who's on our staff, is, has developed our neighboring seminar, which is very evangelistic and is working even now on new believers and those who are curious about the faith curriculum that we're going to be rolling out in the fall, hopefully fall, if not in the, in the, in, in the winter. But we have not plan, developed a plan specifically for a series of programs uh, that, are, that are evangelistic in nature. But that's something we ought and should consider, and thank you for bringing it up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it, well, Easter Extravaganza had 1,100 kids, and 47% of those families were not from our church. And so there are always evangelistic things happening. But as a whole church initiative, we haven't, we don't have, right at this moment, plans for other programs. Other programs would exhaust me. Going back to the previous question. <laughs> but they're, but they're, it's a good thing to think about. Yes, Clark. Can you give any insight into summer service series or the next oh, year? Can I? The question is, uh, can I give you any insight into summer sermon series and fall preaching? Yes, I'm so glad you asked. Thank you. Um, so you may remember the phrase we used uh, in the name change reveal video and in our sermon that Brandon and I preached last week, which was uncomfortable grace. Do you remember that phrase? Grace is uncomfortable both to receive and to extend. That's our, the title of our summer series. It's, it's really a theological and practical exploration of the nature of grace throughout the summer. So it's not one book of the Bible. It's a study of, of where grace comes from, what grace is, what grace does, how we experience it. And so it's, summer is a unique time to preach because you want it to be thematically tied together and make sense, but people are in and out so much, it can't, it, we also want them to be somewhat standalone, each one. So that's, we're going to be preaching on uncomfortable grace throughout the summer. And then in the fall, we're going to begin a preaching series on the book of Hebrews. Ooh, so excited about this. We've studied, uh, we've done a lot of narrative. Uh, Andrew mentioned this at our last preaching team meeting. By the way, Brian and, uh, and, and Sterling and myself and Andrew get together every other week uh, on Thursday mornings to pray and plan and talk about preaching. And Andrew mentioned in our last meeting, I believe it was Andrew, who said, you know, since I've been here, meaning him, I, we've done all narrative, story of Jesus, story of God, which is wonderful. 
But the Bible has other kinds of books in it as well. And so we're going to look at Hebrews, which is really the book that ties beautifully together the Old New Testaments, which we've been in last year and this year. It'll be a perfect fall series. Uh, Then we'll have an Advent series, which is not fully planned yet. And then we'll be studying Ephesians in the spring, which I'm super excited about, if you can't tell. Um, So that's... There's your answer. Book club. Laura, do you want to speak to the book club? Sure. It's just oh, Owen's laying on your lap. So. <laughs> Get up, Owen. <laughs> uh, for the book club, we're going to follow the sermon series. So in the fall, we'll be looking at Hebrews, and in the spring, we'll be looking at Ephesians. So super excited about that. Yeah. yeah. Laura and, and I, I've been talking with, with Jenny as well, who's in the back. By the way, look, look, look at Mr. and Mrs. Caterer back there in the back. <laughs> Wave to them. They look like twins with their glasses, don't they? <laughs> um, uh, anyway. I've uh, been talking about um, uh, another kind of book, an entry-level book club for those that are new believers or seekers, uh, study the book of Mark, specifically designed for those who want to start a, group, a book club, not for other believers, but for their friends and neighbors who do not yet know Christ. And we're working on that, launching that as well. So thanks for that question. Anything else? I was going to mention the almost newlyweds, Tom and uh, Ashlyn, but they snuck out, didn't they? Now I just called attention to that. <laughs> Tom Ward, uh, co-director of high school ministries, and his fiance were here a moment ago. But she's in town for a short little bit of time to visit her fiance. And who wants to sit in a church meeting when your fiance is in town? So they're out. All right. If there are no more. Oh, yes, Amy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We, we, it dawned on us, you know, it's been a while. There were so many of them because there was so much happening, and then we just got running in the fall like we all do and thought, we just need to do this again. So thanks for that. For that. They're good to do. Feel free, if you don't, if you think of a question between, you know, after you leave here, we want to be able to answer those if we can, and your question might prompt us to, oh, yeah, we need to address that. So we, we welcome those as well. Let's, let, if there are no other comments or questions, let's close the way we began by clustering up together again in your little groups and just asking God to bless all the things we've been talking about, what you've heard that's coming and what he is doing, his provision, his protection, and his blessing over, over this, his church. And I'll come up and, and wrap it up in, in a minute. Father God, as uh, we finish praying here and we just pause to acknowledge that you're sovereign over all these things. We once again look back and with gratitude and amazement at all that you've done, which gives us uh, courage in the present and for our future because we know that you're at the helm. 
Thank you for all these people and uh, the families that they represent and lead. Thank you for the, our whole church family. And we, God, we pray specifically for your spirit to be moving in the hearts of those who will join our, this, this year family who we don't even know yet. People in Mill Creek and, and even further south and west that we have not reached, that don't know your love and your grace. People that have brokenness and needs that only you can, can meet. Uh, but thank you for that. We thank you for the stories yet to be written, which you know, God. So give us faith and shower us with your grace as we move forward where you lead us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.